Hello everyone and welcome to another video, another unit review here with me and you. Let's get on with it. So first of all, today we are going to be talking about one of the newest units to come to the game, Bay, part of the Xenogears and what seems to be most people's initial reaction to him going, aw, damn it, I wanted Ellie. And while I'm not going to question with you guys that Ellie is necessarily just the best thing on this banner, I think a lot of people are underestimating Faye considerably, and to a great detriment of themselves. Faye kind of feels like Lyra, sort of, in a way, where a lot of people don't necessarily see the value in Faye right away, which I think is a big mistake. So I only have one Faye, so we might be taking a look at somebody's friend list Faye, but let's take a look at his animations really quickly. First of all, his attack. Pretty cool. Magic. Booyah. And his limit burst, which I gotta say is really cool looking. I have to say he's actually pretty damn cool looking. So why, 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 why am I giving this guy such a recommendation? Okay, first of all, let's get one thing straight. Ellie is the best thing on this banner. Ellie is considerably the best thing on this banner. But that's not to say that Faye is any kind of slouch, nor should you be necessarily looking at Faye in a bad way. So let's take a look, because I know somebody in here has one. Hopefully it's not one of my YouTube subscribers. Anyway, let's take a look at this Faye, which is, you know, pretty decent in terms of attack. Now I just got a note. Is he maxed? Yes, he is. Okay. All right, so let's talk about Faye, first of all. Faye is potentially just one of the more amazing units. Up until now in the game, the highest base attack any 7-star has had is Cloud. Cloud has also been the easiest to hit the 2650 in terms of the attack stat. But now Faye comes along. Faye has a base attack stat of 205, meaning that he is one point higher than Cloud and can get as many stat pots into the attack stat as Cloud can. Basically, he outpaces Cloud in terms of high, potential highest attack because of that one base point. And that one base point can make a huge, huge difference. So taking a look at this guy, first of all, his DMR is a 20% to attack and defense, 30% extra attack when equipped with clothes, recover 5% MP per turn, generally nice materia. Could throw this on a whole bunch of units, and I think it would do just fine. Super Dress Mastery Reward is his armor, which is a 1200 HP, 30 attack, 25 defense, 25 spirit clothes, with a skill of plus 50% attack when equipped with a knuckle. Perfectly good on him, perfectly amazing on Tifa. Either one of them would benefit greatly from this. Now, limit burst wise, this guy has a pretty nice limit burst. Maxed out 2000%, single target, 23 hit physical attack, meaning that it does have some of the chaining properties if you had two of him, which is, you know, an interesting thing. You also single target three turn debuffs, 80% for fire, water, Wind, Earth, Light, and Dark, meaning he has a bigger comprehensive elemental debuff than Ellie does. Light and Dark, that's just something extra nice, especially if you get that super great sword from the attack parameter mission. But it also gives him triple cast per for one turn, and triple cast is a very powerful thing. One of the things that basically, in my opinion, still keeps CG Hayu Potentially just better than Randy. Not much, but definitely, you know, is up there. So, in his 7-star kit, he has 280% single target, one hit visible attack. He has extra to all of his stats, multi-hits, and... But in his kit, what is interesting in his 5-star is a 50% chance to ignore one fatal attack above 40% HP. 
Survivability for attackers is a big thing. It's still one of the things I like the most about Sephiroth is the fact that he can potentially survive a very powerful attack. Having this on Faye definitely improves his value. Now, in his kit as well, starting at 6-star, he gets 20% extra attack when equipped with a knuckle, 25% accuracy, and 100% extra equip attack when true dual handing. We'll talk about the true dual handing thing in a second. He has multi-hit attacks at 44 MP. He has an auto-use plus 100% attack buff, which is just cool to constantly have on, and 50% physical and magical damage versus machines, so he has machine killer naturally in his kit, which is very good. From there, more multi-hits attacks, 5% MP recovery per turn, extra HP and MP, a single target, 800% one-hit physical attack that uses Spirit as magic, which is kind of interesting because his Spirit stat isn't that great. He's definitely no second coming of Lyra. And the last in his 6-star, he gets dual uh, cast of his abilities. Now, when we get into his 7-star, this is where things get interesting, and this is where I think a lot of people don't necessarily see the value, which is too bad. First of all, 40% attack, 25% accuracy, 50% attack when two-handing, so more true dual hand, and an extra 50% killer versus machines. That makes this guy really, really strong against machines. Now, he does have an 84 MP cooldown ability, available turn 3, 2 turn cooldown, 1000% AoE, 1 hit magic attack using Spirit as magic, that debuffs defense and Spirit for 3 turns AoE at 50%. It's okay, he doesn't have really a high enough Spirit that I think this would ever necessarily be worth it, but I haven't, necessarily, I haven't tested it either. Then what we get into is the really interesting stuff, which is his Fire Earth Wind, Water, Light, and Dark abilities. Now, what is cool about these abilities is that they are either single target, one hit, powerful attacks at 600%, or the Wind ability actually is a 14 hit at 9 frames. 9 frames is a little awkward, but two of him chaining would be really, really, really strong at 600%, considering how high you can get this guy's attack. Plus, that ability is also debuffing Wind Resistance, too. The other one that's also a good multi-hitter is its Dark ability, which is a 700% single target 8 hit at 6 frames. Dark, physical attack that debuffs Dark. Now, all of that is really cool, but if you know what I was talking about with Vincent last month, then you'll probably know why I like this upcoming cooldown ability. First of all, available turn 1, 3 turn cooldown. That's good coverage. Is a 3 turn self plus 250% to attack, defense, magic, and spirit. And self fills 5 limit burst crystals and learns the ability to, for 2 turns, to triple cast any of his ability. Triple casting for 2 turns is pretty damn good, but a 250% buff to all stats is really, really, really powerful, especially when you consider how high his attack can get. It's basically like Vincent, but he's also buffing all of his other base stats, meaning he could be very, very survivable, very, very strong. There he gets 30% to attack defense spirit, 1.3 times limit burst damage, because why not? His limit burst is very strong, might as well give him some extra damage. 20% attack, 20% to defense, spirit, MP, and 120% modifier for some abilities, 250% modifier damage for some abilities, and 150% modifier for some other abilities, which... are not, I don't believe, his 7-star abilities, so... Probably a good thing. Anyway, regardless of how you look at it, this guy is incredibly powerful. What's more, because of that base 205 at stat, he can get very strong, even with, you know, fairly so-so equipment. 
But the other thing is that I think people are missing is the fact that he can actually wield spears at the same time. So, who has a potentially a spear that could be used that is a true dual hand? Off the top of my head, Nalanaru Super TMR, which is 175 attack, 30, and gives the Thunder Element and is true dual hand. I think this plus Fey is very, very strong. The only problem is that Fey cannot debuff for the Thunder Element. So provided you could get someone in your party who could Thunder debuff, that on Fey would be really powerful. He might even be able to hit a 2700 attack or 2800. Uh, in theory, he could be just truly incredibly overly powered. So I have to actually say that I have to, I think that Faye is really, really quite amazing and very, very strong. So for this, where since my Faye is unfortunately not the stuff of legends because I only got one of him because the polls didn't go that great. Oh, good. I mean, that's just lucky. So that, that's what that is. Thank you to whoever unit this is. I mean, you have built an amazing unit. If you had Nala Naru Spear, I would be truly terrified of your guy. So we're going to put everybody in defense, and we are going to use this cooldown ability just to see what his stats actually get up to. 3,286 in terms of attack, 978 in terms of defense, 858 in terms of spirit, and magic is 696, because why the hell not? The stats on this on Bay are insane, and this is with a not necessarily the best equipment that you could potentially want. In theory, it would be considerably better if you could have Bay with that spear. But now we just have triple casting, and yeah, uh, I don't think we need anybody else's help in this one. We really didn't. So I have to say that Faye is just probably... Faye is underestimated by a lot of people. Like, a ton of people underestimate just how good Faye actually is. But I gotta say, through um, early testing, or early of my testing, I think that Faye is actually incredible. Absolutely incredible. Because of those chaining abilities, there is one very key weakness to Fey, and it's the same key weakness to that some people have said to me about what's about Ellie is well, who does she chain with? Well, if enough people pull Fey and it gets out that he's just that strong, doesn't really matter. Either way, I gotta say, Fey is absolutely incredible. An amazing unit on this list and I would 100% recommend him and say that if you got him instead of oh yes the music died a long time ago sorry but recording videos back to back um, if you got Faye don't feel bad he's actually pretty damn incredible so that's all for now I will see you all in the next video now I need to remember to shut up